Good morning, everybody. Um, I, I feel quite privileged to carry on the South African context, and we take the front floor at the beginning of the of, of this two days. Um, so thank you very much for everybody um, involved in this whole process. Thank you very much to to all the people back home as well, um, particularly. Um, the CEO of BPU, Michael Krauser, so I just wanted to say a very, very big thank you to him and all the partners we have. Um, we spoke about networks in the beginning and I think it's an amazing network and an opportunity to have, so thank you. Right, so um, I'm, I'm gonna zoom us into Cape Town and straight into a case study. So we're going from rural South Africa to urban South Africa. So monobisi, it means hope. And I, and I purposefully separated that there. The case study is about hope, and I never give up. We've been working there for seven years now, and I still believe that we have some good examples, and I still believe that we have hope. So this is the current situation that we do have in Cape Town um, around housing delivery. We've been stuck in a housing delivery system in Cape Town that delivers a one house, one plot scenario. But what we experience is very different from this in the informal areas we're working in. And I think that we need to change. We're in, we're in a point in South Africa where we have to change. If we don't change our, our issues of crime, our issues of violence, extreme violence, and all our general social issues will be extreme. So I'm just going to explain a bit um, about VPUU, is that it's not only around land tenure. For us, it's about a lot more that we deal with. So we deal with a strategy that starts with prevention, particularly crime prevention. But what we do is we, we turn it around and we start with the innovation. So we work with early childhood development and youth and local economic development. Some of these things will fall in, but I just wanted to explain it at the beginning. The other is also, like the previous example, is working um, with the community. So it's, not, but not only working with the community, it's working with the government as well. Um, and there are lots of challenges of being the person in the middle, the mediator, um, the facilitator, the intermediary. But we believe that partnerships are at the core of this um, and they need to be fostered and also cared for. We deal with the protection, and this is where my main realm falls into the spatial um, planning and the built environment area. But it's also about neighborhoods providing equal access, equal access and rights to the communities. It's also dealing with the residents' vulnerability. And last, we deal with evidence based. It's about research and development, working with people with technology on the ground but also working with the soft sides and measuring the quality of life. We found these to be incredibly valuable in working with governments as well in terms of being able to show service delivery and what actually service delivery means on the ground. So I'm gonna zoom us into Cape Town. Um, it's quite a long way from here as I've realized. Um, so we work in Cape Town and Paul and Villiersdorp. So we work in a big metro city, we work in a, in a, in a medium-sized city in Powell, and a rural town of Villiersdorp. In Cape Town, we work in um, predominantly three areas, but the area I'm going to show you today is called Kailicha. It's about 35 kilometers from the city center. So we started in, in 2009, actually, and with, with, with the city of Cape Town, the municipal government, and it was about a revised approach to upgrading of informal settlements in South Africa. Something had to change. We could not keep going. We couldn't just ignore the informal settlements that we have. But it's moving from not only an infrastructure-based approach to a more holistic-based approach about the quality of life and the built environment. For us, that automatically changes the levels of crime. It's an ab about an approach based on needs and priorities identified through the involvement of communities. And it's about the implementation of pilot projects to identify and test the methodologies and processes. We haven't got any solutions as such, but we're working on processes 
And I think that to get away from the, the, the idea of a product is something that is incredibly important for us. So we started with in, in, in an informal settlement called Monobisi Park, but I think we didn't start with tenure. We started with a variation of different levels of the spatial environment. And some of those were looking at a safety strategy, an education strategy, particularly for young children, a tenure strategy, and also looking at movement networks, linking it to technical infrastructure, um, working with the, the municipality in the city of Cape Town. So that's what I wanted to say. We didn't start out with tenure. Tenure was something that we realized was very important as we went along. But in terms of tenure, what did we find out? We found out that we needed to incrementally secure tenure through both administrative mechanisms at an individual level, um, whilst also legal recognition that secures the formal status of the settlement as a whole. They had to work together. However, since that, and all the challenges that we've experienced along the way, we have also added an, a third one, which was around securing the public realm for long-term um, development at a precinct scale. This is something that in informal settlements you don't often have. You don't have land that is institutionally set aside for public facilities or public walkways. So back in 2010, we started with Urban Landmark, with Lauren Royston and Tessa Cousins and Mark Napier, and the city of Cape Town going through workshops um, to try and understand. And although we said it's a step-by-step -step process, we realized it wasn't quite step-by-step. -step. So the first one was around the status quo, what it is, and carrying out an enumeration, and that was considered step one. Step two was supposed to be the legal recognition, so we proclaim the area, um, and go through land use management applications, et cetera. And that would lead then to securing the long-term tenure. And that seems quite simple when you put it in step one, two, and three. But it's not that simple. And we often flipped between the long-term number three with the community, saying, what is the long-term vision? And then going back to step two, and then back to step one, all at the same time. So let's just get to the context. Monrubisi Park, some of the facts. 25,000 people. It's a big informal settlement. It could be the size of a small town in Italy. We have um, 6,472 households, and I can say that um, from an enumeration. Um, however, we do have changes, but that's good. Life changes. People die, people are born, and so it goes on. We have about 65 households for a working tap, and 19 households share a toilet. That's a lot. Um, however, 79% of the residents feel they'll be living in Monwebisi Park in five years' time, and that was through a survey we conducted last year. 85% um, of the registered households are on the community register. That sort of flips between 80 to 90% because people also change, so that, that also is something we have to monitor. And 59% of the residents perceive that they feel safer after receiving tenure certificate. We work very closely with a local, the local community. So we have a, a, the local leadership is called the Safe Node Area Committee. So they're not only a political group, they range and they are in, inclusive of faith-based and youth organizations as well. We're on four parcels of land here. It's owned by, between the city of Cape Town and the Western Cape government. So we are on government land, the informal settlement, but we also are adjacent to a nature reserve, and then on the other side, we have a formal um, Kailicha. We've done a mapping process um, since 1996, and we continue to do a mapping process. We have much better technology and aerial photography at our fingertips than what we did when we started. I think that's also something that we've experienced over the seven years is, is, is access to information and the way we can use technology, cell phone apps, et cetera, is so much more advanced and really does help the process. Just a quick snippet. So this, I, I, I'm constantly on the ground taking photographs. So just in a few years, somebody painted their house, 
They claim the area, they claim the front space. On a more institutional level, 2012, and Imton Jenny is a public space. That's what happened. We had a crash develop there. So let's just quickly go through administrative recognition. <clears throat> so it goes back to what, what was called the Book of Life. And I called it the Book of Life as well because it's like this big Harry Potter book. And I think Leon, I described that to Leon. Um, and it was, I was amazed when I saw this book. But when I looked at it, it didn't hold a, a, a registry that was, was viable or have any rights to it. So that was when we decided that land tenure actually was a very important part of what we were doing in, in, in the informal settlements. If it has a history of, of um, what was given to the area um, through the years from 1997. Also what was quite important, and it was quite hard to find one of these, was a service registration card. But we did find one, and it takes us back to what the process with the municipality started. So there has been a process with the government and with the municipality right back from 1997. So we set up not an enumeration, we set up a community audit. And the reason it was that was because there was this register in place. It needed to be an updated red community register. It couldn't be called a, a new register, um, because of the politics on the ground. So we like that. That came from the community themselves, updating our existing register. But we realized that it had different parts of it. Enumeration, spatial, tenure, and skills. Each one we assigned to different responsibilities to different um, areas, whether it was local leadership, local authorities, or ourselves as the implementing agents. We then um, conducted the community audit, and this was by the, the, the municipality called the enumeration form. We called it the community um, audit of the dwelling questionnaire. Um, and dwelling, particularly not house or home, it had to be the house, household, which linked to a dwelling. There were different aspects of what it did. So we asked more questions in this process than we, than we had to, but we needed more information. We worked with students initially, and then we started working with volunteers, and we trained up people to work on the ground with cell phones and GPSs. There was an existing number, a WP number, and then through our process, um, we went through a process of sticking stickers to know which houses, um, six and a half thousand houses is quite a lot of houses to enumerate on the ground. Um, there was a community register office set up at um, one of the community, uh, we, we built a small community facility, and we set up a community register there where people were interviewed. People could also locate themselves in a map. This also took some training to be able to train people to work with maps. And then, because the houses were geolocated, we could accurately pinpoint exactly which houses hadn't necessarily come to the community register office, or they hadn't been interviewed. Each then person, the, the household head, was then asked, and they, were, they, they had a photograph taken to, to take away all the conflict. We also worked with the University of Cape Town on conflict mediation. We then had um, new numbers put in place. Some of the, the, the information we got was gender-headed households. 50% were female-headed households. Electricity information and how we could actually then work with the, the local um, electricity um, department to actually then electrify the community. The mayor then gave out tenure certificates in 2014, and then we continued to work with the community, and we did a recent evaluation on how useful was your tenure certificate. Access to electricity, of course, came up as the biggest one. We also, through all the information, we also still continue to monitor taps and toilets, using cell phone apps, and that is important as well for the tenure and the, the quality of life of people in the area. Legal recognition. So instead of taking the normal route, subdivision consolidation rezoning to an establishment, we realized that there were different levels that you could tap in to be able to get um, some form of legal recognition. 
And that didn't necessarily mean that you had to have one to be able to get the other. So we started a process in 2010 where we co-designed with the community. And I have to say we did co-design with the city of Cape Town, but they seem to forget that. Um, where we, we, we did a lot of work on the ground. Um, we did mapping, we mapped the whole area, the geospatial, we walked. I walked all those areas, we, we mapped them time and time again, and we continue to map them as well. We also looked at the landscape. We're in a dune system, we're on an edge of a nature reserve. We then developed a spatial structure that could then start working that made more sense. And then we worked out what were the developable areas. We worked with the biodiversity area in the city of Cape Town. We worked with the planning department in the city of Cape Town. We worked with the fire department and safety to work out the safe width of a neighborhood block. We developed a network plan that could give you quick and easy access. Access for people walking home, so you were improving your, your safety levels, but also access for fire engines and refuse trucks, etc. We called that the Spatial Reconfiguration Plan. The City of Cape Town then asked us to call it a development framework, put it into legal terms. Um, so what we also did was we renumbered all the areas. So we had a, more, uh, a better understanding of what the areas were. So different block numbers, so 18A, 18B, 18C. This also then worked with your tenure certificate. So the two had to run hand in hand. The Spatial Development Framework and the administrative recognition. We then looked at different options. You could have various options. You could have, you could do block development. You could do uh, sub, de sub block development. You could even take it to individual plots. But that was almost leaving it to the end because what we would do is just recognize the area as a, an, a, a settlement, not an informal settlement, but in a settlement in land use management terms. So that was what we got to in 2013. We um, submitted a land use management application. That land use management application still sits with the municipality of Cape Town. So there are many challenges to taking it to the next step in terms of legally recognizing the system. And I've got a few ideas around that as well, but I know I've got two minutes left. But what I did want to say was that we have managed to incrementally put some strategic projects on the ground so, the, so you can do things. Um, we, we, we built 25 public spaces. I haven't had time to even talk about our public space program. Um, we, we built two community facilities. We put, um, there's about 98% electricity to the area. We've got a few more people coming in. Um, we've got ECD programs running. We've got youth programs. We have a movie night on Fridays. Um, we have all sorts of other things going on. But what the idea was to focus <coughs> that implementation in two particular areas. <coughs> and those were based around the public space projects. So this was one of our Emton Jenny, and our Emton Jenny means public space, um, in 2014. And then we slowly, bit by bit, have been working there. We had our open day on Saturday, which is why I didn't, I only arrived yesterday because we had a, a very big um, open day um, where we built um, a community facility, po and particularly in brick, um, as requested by the community, and we've got building plans approval for this. What we've also done, though, is we've surveyed the site. We've managed to identify and peg out this area for long-term institutional um, space for a community facility, which is not something that we often think about in tenure. We often think about the individual house. And I'm saying house, not even household here, because we have tenants and all sorts of other things. So for us, moving that to a totally different domain was very important. We're also working on safe walkways. Now, safe walkways are also um, good points for, for putting your services as well. Um, but I think in closing, and I think that's almost my last slide, um, is that the next step. So what do we want to do next? We can't necessarily get legal recognition without going through full engineering processes. But we do want to work with grey water systems. We do want to work with fire systems. We do want to work with safe walkways. So you don't necessarily need the full legal recognition to do things. 
So some of our lessons that we have learned is that the two go hand in hand. Administrative recognition and legal recognition need to work together. There are, there are various elements to each of those. But the one also, if you miss one, it's not necessarily the end of the world. You can keep working on these things. But I think it's also about a process, and it's about allowing a medium to long-term development, which is often doesn't fit within a government process, which is short-term, quick wins. Um, we've been through three mayors on this project. So you need, where, where are your political champions to drive this? Um, and then it also is desperately in need for engineering standards and an upgrade in terms of how do we deal with a 4 by 4 that can go in and access a community or a bicycle that can pick up, uh, pick up rubbish. You don't have to have a big refuse removal vehicle to do this. So I think it's about, I think in the, in the beginning we said we need to question the way we are doing things and we need to, to deal with this resistance to change. Um, and that goes from all levels, from NGO, from government, and from community. And with thanks. <laughs>